All right. Hi, guys, and welcome to the next episode. Um, right now, we want to write a function that mutates an individual. So let's get on with it. <clears throat> so right here, we assume that this individual has already been selected for mutation. And uh, we want to go through its genes and uh, based on the uh, gene uh, mutation probability, we're going to mutate each of those genes. So if we have a gene mutation probability of 0 0.3, that means each gene is likely to be mutated by 30%. So how do we do that? Well, how I do it is I take a random number between 0 and 1 and um, if the random function is a good one, it should, it should give you um, uh, an uniform distribution between 0 and 1. So we take uh, that number and we say if the number is less than 0 0.3, then, then gene uh, mutation probability, if it's less, then we're going to mutate this individual gene. Otherwise, we don't mutate it. Um, why, why, does it why does this work? Well, if we get a uniform number between 0 and 1, that means that we have a 30% chance uh, for that number to be between uh, uh, 0 and 0 0.3. So, there are two ways that we can do this. Um, one is the more uh, sort of um, brute force way, and another one is the more nice, the more like subtle way. The more brute force way is, once we've decided that we're going to mutate this gene, we're simply going to uh, select a random value uh, that falls within that gene's ranges. And that's it. The more, I guess uh, you can say, um, accurate way from an evolutionary perspective. Actually, I'm not sure if that's the case. But anyway, just hear me out. Uh, the, the other, the more subtle way is um, we have that gene's value. And we don't just select a random number um, within that gene range. But we uh, fr from that value, we randomly move it 30%, 50%, well, within the a range of up to 50% or up to 30% around its current value. And if it goes uh, beyond its, uh, its uh, limit, limit, its range limit, then we sort of loop it back from uh, to the beginning. So, uh, so yeah, I will code both of these things because um, the first one is just a quick and easy one to do so, but the second one is, is more interesting. And, um, and uh, I'm going to do such that once a gene is mutated, half of the time is going to be mutated in this sort of brute force way and half of the time in this, most, in this more nice subtle way. So, let's go. Okay, so basically this is the brute force way. So here we want to specify, we, we want to know the left uh, um, range and the light, right range. We want to know the min and max. Then 
we need to know the value of the gene, uh, which we know, and then we want to specify, you know, what's the most, uh, what's the furthest away that this mutation can 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 go. Um, normally, I think a value around thirty percent at most, or or even fifty percent at most, uh, from where it is, is is a good value because it can be fifty, but it, it's most likely going to be you know between zero and fifty, um, obviously. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just code it, and if 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 this is not clear, just uh, drop a comment below, and and I'll try to explain and try to make you understand better. So <clears throat> I'm not actually going to use this. Uh, gene dist is the distance um, of of a, of a gene's range is the absolute distance between the the top and the the, the left and the right um, uh, ranges. So knowing that distance, we want our mutation to be uh, at most thirty percent of that distance, thirty three percent. All right, what the hell are you doing here, Tudor? Well, what I'm doing here is <clears throat> I take that initial individual and I add to it 30% of its distance, of the, of the distance of its range, multiplied by a random value between minus 1 and 1. I take that gene, and that gene is somewhere along the, the, the range, uh, right so I find what's the value of 30% of that range and then I multiply that by a random number between minus 1 and 1 and then I add it to the actual to the initial value of the gene so that means that this gene range uh, this new gene is gonna be within 30% distance of the initial gene now uh, what happens if we overtake our boundary in either direction? Well, if we overtake our boundary in the uh, in the other direction, we're simply gonna uh, um, gonna we're simply gonna sort of in, we're simply gonna cross over to the other side. So if our boundary is a hundred and we hit a hundred and ten, then we're gonna add that ten to uh, the leftmost boundary. So if the leftmost boundary is three, then we're gonna have 3 plus 10, 13. So we sort of just loop it over. So if it's above the right range, then we minus the left range from it and we, mo we module, module that by the distance, by gene distance and then we add it to the left range and if it's below the left range, then we should take whatever the difference between the, le the, the left range and uh, and wait oh so if it's below then we minus um oh yeah 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 we minus whatever uh, that value is from the right range we mo we module the gene this so that it's within our range and then we add it to left range and I think I think that should do it I think anyway this is the this is the code that I wrote before so I'm gonna trust it cool so we've mutated it and simply um, at the end at the end all this all this um, 
all these calculations might actually uh, return something that's not an integer so I'm gonna say gene is equal to int of x so if you, we're mutating then, uh, then uh, gene is int of x and um, new individual dot append gene And at the end, we just return new individual. Okay, the very last uh, part of this video is we're going to mutate the whole population. All right, cool. That was it for this video. In the next one, we're going to uh, write the function that selects the best individuals out of a population. Stay tuned.